thanks so much. It's uh, Gabe Sigler from Bad Feeling Magazine in Montreal. Uh, I love the first two episodes of the show. Great to speak to you both. Um, question for Stephen. I was wondering if you could describe um, the process of merging the established mythos that players know from the games with new elements that you wanted to introduce um, in the series. Well, first, the, the, doing the show gives you a chance to tell, tell a nine-episode season, you had a chance to do a lot of world building. So we got a chance to show um, canonical parts of the galaxy that maybe didn't get much play in the games or in the other books, like the Rubble or Madrigal. And then building off of that, um, <clears throat> it was a constant feedback loop with 343 where either I would dig deep into the canon to find unfleshed out areas that we could go deeper into or bring out characters, or I could invent new characters and, and you know, make sure that I incorporate them into the Halo ethos in a way that they feel like they've always been there. Thank you. I keep these answers short. Najir? So Hello, Najir Chambers, Big Gold Belt Media. And um, my question is for Kiki. Um, in recent interviews, you did mention that the helmet would have come off. Yeah. And with this being such a big, iconic, legendary moment, one could say, I was surprised that the buildup of it was uh, pretty short. You kind of ripped the Band-Aid off pretty fast. And I wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, to know, what was this decision to execute this in this fashion, uh, knowing this is potentially one of the greatest mysteries of the franchise? Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was an interesting balance because for some people it was a moment 20 years in the making. For others, it was a moment that they, they felt like they didn't ever want to have happen, right? And I think, you know, the decision to take off the helmet was really driven by the, by the story and our desire to tell this character story and to be able to tell the story of Master Chief, but also to be able to tell the story of John and, and the person inside the helmet. And so, um, in order to really get to that story and start to get into John's character journey, it felt important for him to come out of the helmet and it made sense to do it in, in episode one. It was also important that he do it within the context of the story for a reason, right? It's such, a, it's such an impactful moment for the helmet to come off and you wanted it to really be motivated by something that John wanted to do and that was a moment where he was building trust with Quan that was a moment where he needed to leave himself physically vulnerable in order to, to, to build that trust and, and to sort of reinforce his intent with her. Um, and so that was, you know, again, story always guides, uh, guides these decisions and what is the right thing for the story. And, and as it happens, it, it was in, in episode one. Thank you. Brady. Hi there, Brady Daters from Blurry Night in Cape Town, South Africa. Good evening. Um, Kiki, you've been involved with Halo 4 and currently oversee its transmedia. Uh, is there anything in particular that you enjoyed about this adaptation? Oh my gosh, there, there is so much. I mean, it, it, it's a dream come true to be able to bring a, a universe that you've been so steeped in for so long and have been thinking about storytelling in so many different mediums to have the opportunity to to really bring the universe to life at this scope and the scale and with the level of ambition and detail that we have, yeah. but also to have the opportunity to have nine hours to tell this character story, right? Video games are such an interesting medium for narrative and our games have, have a particular narrative structure based on being first person. And so you, you, know, you have the opportunity with the series to really tell a different kind of story with the Master Chief and with John and with Cortana and Halsey and, and explore relationships and dynamics in a way that's hard to do in the games in the same way. And so that was both incredibly um, daunting, but more than anything, incredibly exciting from a creative perspective and also, frankly, just from a, a fan perspective. Thank you. Kate? Hi. Um, my question is really coming from my place as a, as a longtime Halo fan, and it is we've seen Halo come to different mediums, but also often without Master Chief. Um, so why now? Why was Master Chief chosen to be the focus of the live action series? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, even going back to Halo 4, 
And, and you know, we've explored the Master Chief and, and, and John in, in novels in different ways, but going back to Halo 4 and, and the story there of, of Chief and Cortana and Chief really starting to sort of question, you know, his, his place and, and how much agency he really had in the world, I think that really um, sort of excited us about spending the time to tell this Chief's story and see him in a different way. You know, the challenge of that, of course, being not impeding on everyone's personal story of Chief, uh, especially with the helmet coming off. So I think, I think the way that we looked at it was, how do we tell this amazing character story of a character we all care about and has such an interesting story, right, which we read, read about in the books. Um, so how do we do that, let players preserve their version of Chief, but also ask them to kind of come along with us for the ride as we tell this one particular story of, of Chief. Thank Frederick. you. Frederick? Hi, Frederick Nudy here for Choice Cut Media. Glad to be here with you guys. Uh, my question can go for either one of you guys, but uh, what was the number one thing with people coming into the franchise or newcomers coming into the franchise to get out of new series? Well, I think it's, it's the hope is that if you have no previous knowledge of the franchise, you can come into this and just have a great ride and enjoy this show and actually get welcomed into the Halo universe and, and want to dig even further, even more deeply into it. Um, it's you know first and foremost it's a it's a, meant to be a, a great ride a great story about human beings and and um, the themes are universal about hope and humanity and awe and wonder and taking you to big new worlds you haven't seen that's what sci-fi gives us the opportunity to do so my hope is that if you have no knowledge of Halo it's a great fun show to watch and if you um, are a deep uh, aficionado of Halo there's plenty of rewards for you as well because we did it with you in mind. Lupe? Hi, it's Lupe Haas with Cinemovie. Um, well, congratulations on the show. Um, as a person who didn't play the game, um, I'm really into it. Okay. And I wanted to know, um, so there's a lot of revelations when I was doing my research. There's a lot of revelations you're letting out, like that he, we unmask um, Master Chief, and also that's a little bit different than the game. So why did you want to put those feelers out? So that, do you want to temper kind of the backlash? <laughs> well, I mean, I think, what we want is for people to come into the story and really be able to sit back and enjoy the story, right? And, and part of it's also respect for, for how strong a feeling people have about some of these things. And, and you know, it was, it was the right thing for this show, for, for this story, for the helmet to come off, but that doesn't <clears throat> mean it wasn't a difficult decision. And I think, you know, one of the things that's amazing about the Halo community um, is they're incredibly diverse and there's a million opinions and um, you know it's very hard to do anything that will please everyone but my hope is that that fans who may not agree with every decision will at least respect why we did it and as the series plays out sort of understand why those decisions get made and so I think being upfront about about some of those things that we know are controversial is important so we can have that conversation but again, with the hope that as, as the story and the season plays out, the reason why, because there was never a change for the sake of change, the reason why we made those decisions will become very clear um, in supporting the story. And our last question will be Kleps. Uh, hi, Klep. Uh, we are critics.com. Uh, and my question is, when adapting this uh, game to a, to a series, what was the most important element that you wanted to shine through? This, this, this question is for either or, but I want to I want to start with Kiki. Yeah, I would say the very most important thing, and this is true of any experience that we build in Halo, you know, we call them the Halo beliefs, which is those very, very universal themes of hope and heroism and humanity, you know, the idea that humanity is something worth saving, the idea that there can be a hero inside any of us and that like wonder and mystery of a sci-fi universe. That has, to, that has to imbue every single thing that we do because that really is core, core to Halo and, and telling these human relatable stories against this crazy action sci-fi backdrop with humanity at stake. That, that 
um, is 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 um, required no matter no matter what we do.